Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. I have a friend that has a passion to investigate the lost tribes of Israel. And recently, he went to Africa. He went to Zimbabwe. And they did a DNA study on this particular tribe in Africa. And they found the highest percentage of the priestly families is in this tribe in Africa of anywhere in the world. Now, this is what it says to me. The Bible says the temple will be rebuilt. But guess what is missing? The authentic priests. Guess what we've just found? The priests of Israel. <laughs> you know, I, I have known uh, Rabbi Jonathan Bernus for a, oh, you were just out of your teens when we met. Uh, but one, but my most exciting memory of you and it may surprise a lot of you when you hear this, is uh, we were fairly new believers, and he, was, he had a, a Messianic Jewish congregation in Rochester, New York, and I used to go up there for days of prayer and fasting, and we used to pray in supernatural languages, tongues, I mean, for hours and hours, and Jonathan, I am- They were one, great days. They were. I, I I'm 100% them. convinced that here God has used you with uh, your own television ministry and, uh, and you're doing so many things right now and he, with it's supernatural. We birthed that when we were praying together and we didn't even know, but better, than, better than us not knowing, the devil didn't know. <laughs> I would say, Sid, I, I think God started to birth that whole Russian ministry that we were able to witness together. One yes. of my favorite moments together is when we saw 4,000 mostly Jewish that Russian speakers in the Oktoberski Concert Hall in Russia during the altar call running forward with tears streaming down many of their eyes and praying to receive Jesus as the Messiah. Over 13,000 that came in that outreach we did we, together. We, we never, ever, I mean, one or two would come to the Lord in my congregation or Jonathan's in a year, <laughs> you know? Uh, but thousands running with tears in their eyes. We had never seen anything like that. And, and we knew. We it birthed was, it though in prayer five years earlier. And, and you started in something that I had only seen one other time. It was called travail. What is travail? Travail is actually birthing pains. The, the Bible in Romans 8 talks about the creation groaning. Gro all creation groaning for, for that which is yet to be revealed. And I really believe that there is a special anointing, Sid, that comes on people, birth, literally, literally birth pains, that, that and it comes right from here, right from the gut, and just beginning to, you, it starts with tongues, and then the unction grows, the urgency grows, and it just, I found myself falling flat on my face before God. And I really felt the Lord show me that we, we our ministry, we have, a, an abundant blessing of finances, but a prayer deficit. Because God is is bringing me in through doors that are absolutely incredible, like Zimbabwe. And I had this picture of a water tower. And what God was showing me is that prayer, intercession, actually is like a water tower where you store up water 
and then I, I saw this thing that you pulled on, and then the water would come pouring down from the water tower. Intercession is something like a water tower where we intercede, we intercede, and we're, building, we're storing up prayer like a water tower, and then it's released at the time that it needs to be released in God's specific time. Now, here is the amazing thing. And God's showing you something about the soon return of Messiah. What is he showing you? Absolutely. The time, we are at one minute to 12, Said We are in the last of the last days. And the spotlight has going back to Israel, back to the Jewish people. And the church needs to realize that they have a very, that people watching, all of you have a very specific mandate from the Lord to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy, but also to be a co-worker with him in the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. We're entering into it now. And I have an inkling, and I'm going to tell you about it, and Jonathan's going to tell you about what is being birthed. And when we come back, you're going to find out about an ancient Jewish supernatural way of having an, a most amazing power of God, when the Messiah said, you will do the same works I have done and even greater, some of you are ready for the same. I'm ready for the greater. Yes. How about you? <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Reserve your place and get ready to experience Israel, the land of the supernatural with Sid and Joyce Roth. November 24th to December 3rd, 2015. It's the perfect temperature and the land is calling your name. Visit the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane, Calvary, and take communion at the Garden Tomb. Visit the Upper Room, Qumran, the home of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and receive ministry as you travel across the Sea of Galilee. If you like, you can be baptized in the Jordan River, the Jewish way, the way Jesus was baptized, and so much more. The price for this 10-day adventure includes round-trip airfare from New York City, hotel, all taxes, all tips included. Don't miss out on going with Sid Roth on this Israel tour for this special low price. Please specify the Sid Roth Israel trip when you call or visit SidRoth.org forward slash Israel. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, many of you have heard about confessing God's Word. As a matter of fact, the, the major scripture uh, was when Joshua was taking over. God gave Joshua some advice. What did God tell Joshua? Well, understand that Joshua was uh, now given the responsibility to follow in the footsteps of Moses and lead th about three million Jewish people into the promised land. And can, you can imagine that the I, I It could have weight, 10 Jewish people and you get 11 opinions, you, you 3 do. million. You Whoa. do. Wow. And I think in a mo it, and I think he had a lot of insecurity and, and, I, and God at that time spoke to him and said, Joshua, you're gonna be successful and I'm going to tell you how. The way that you will succeed is by meditating on my word day and night. And then he said this, keeping it in your mouth. If you go back to the word meditate, Christian meditation said it, uh, is uh, connected to the Hebrew word sika, which means to reflect, to think, to ponder. But the Hebrew for meditate, the real Hebrew for meditate and used in the, that verse is haga. We get the word hagada from that, to tell. Mm -hmm. It means to mutter, it means to utter. God was saying to him, I want you to, to not just to keep the laws of God in his heart, but to, to speak them forth day and night, to constantly keep them in his mouth, it was talking about confession. And God said, you'll be successful in all you do. You'll prosper if you keep my word in your mouth, if you keep uttering it, muttering it, confessing it. Why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I believe as Joshua confessed the word of God, he kept hearing it over and over, hearing here and then hearing in his spirit. And when it got into his spirit, that 19 inches between the head and the heart, all faith is released, and that's, that's, that's where we live. That's where the Spirit of God lives, in our spirit, and we have to build up our spirit. How? Praying in other tongues and confessing the Word of God. You know, what you're doing is you're almost rehearsing what God is saying over and over and over again, and it's becoming a reality, it's a dynamic reality on the inside. It, it absolutely is. Confessing the Word of God 
is absolutely biblical. It's powerful. It's life changing. And I saw this very specifically as a pastor when uh, a woman that had been suffering from depression, acute depression, most of her life, and she said she carried this as a cloud around her, uh, just oozing depression and and it, it she had been to doctors and and psychiatrists psychologists and i was counseling her to no avail and i started praying for her and the lord just spoke to me about con giving her some scriptures to confess and so i cut the hour short and i said here's what i want you to do or i'm not meeting with you next week you look in the mirror and you confess these scriptures and i had written down some Whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Less than a week later, she came back She was smi to my office. She was smiling for the first time I'd ever see her smile. She had been completely delivered, not from counseling appointments, by, but by confessing the word of God, and it got into her spirit. She was delivered instantly. Now. You, you have a little switch on this. You say there is power in the original Hebrew language in confessing God's word. Explain that. Well, there's a couple of things with Hebrew. First of all, Hebrew is the language of the, known as the tongue of the prophets. The Old Testament, the original language of the scriptures was Hebrew. And some teach, and I, I'm a believer in this, that when God spoke the world into existence, by the way, the Bible says that the tongue has the power over life and death. There's life and death in the tongue. The tongue is a creative force, and what separates us from all of God's creation is articulate speech. I believe that when God spoke the world into existence and said, let there be light, it was in the Hebrew language. So I believe that Hebrew itself as a language is a creative force. Maybe it's the tones or whatever, but it's a creative force. But there's something else about Hebrew. It is a super language, Sid. What you know you what mean? I mean by that? What do you mean? Okay, I saw you drinking some gr greens uh, juice. You don't have to the, tell everything. I saw it was all, it's, <laughs> it's got kale and it's got all kinds, it's a super food. Right. Because it has all these nutrients pressed into it. There's super foods that are packed with nutrients and super vitamins and so on. Well, Hebrew is a super language. Example, shalom. Contained in shalom, which means peace. We have the English word peace, shalom. Right. But shalom has 20 other meanings. It's, it's, it's completion, it's welfare, it's wholeness, it's well-being, it's security. And then the Hebrew word yireh. That word, we say provide, but the Hebrew word means abundance. The Hebrew word means to bless, to prosper. It means success, it means sustenance, it means fulfillment, protection, shelter graciousness, enjoyment. It means uh, rain. Literally, God will bring rain. Yireh, he'll bring rain in the dryness. So what you're saying Revival. is that when we proclaim God's promises in Hebrew, you get the full meaning of what God meant rather than that one English word in our translation. You get 30 words in one word. Okay, but most people can't speak Hebrew. I took bar mitzvah Hebrew. It took me years to learn Hebrew. I studied Hebrew from childhood. I hated it. I was a bad student. But there was a method developed, why it called transliteration. Why was this developed? There is a the solution. Community? When, the, when the Jews from, of Europe who were raised in the whole uh, yeshiva program and Hebrew was part of their prayer life and their study life from childhood moved to America, they began to go through a secularization and they lost the Hebrew language. Right. Well, the way that the rabbis uh, came up was a brilliant way, came up with uh, a way to use Hebrew in their prayer books is called transliteration. It's taking the Hebrew and using phonetic English to actually spell out the Hebrew. So Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, God is one. In Hebrew, we, we, most of us know that, but then in transliteration, we can actually read along with the rabbi and participate in the service without actually learning Hebrew. How, it takes five long? minutes. Did I you knew your hear question. that? Anyone five interested minutes. in speaking biblical Hebrew in five minutes? No study, no background, five minutes you're speaking Hebrew. That's my kind. Now, I see all sorts of things selling languages. I like the five-minute variety. When I come back, wait till you hear about this tribe that Jonathan found. It's, it's one of the lost tribes of Israel right in Africa that they did a DNA study on. It has... Hi, these 
Lumba tribe people have higher high priest or priestly DNA, they're called the Kohanes, than any other people group anywhere. We'll be right back. God gave Israel Hebrew, a supernatural language. When the prophets spoke in Hebrew, God's promises would come to pass. More with Jonathan Burness when we return to It's Supernatural. Now you can confess God's promises for success, wealth, and blessings. In English, Adonai Yira means abundance, blessings, multiplication, lacking for nothing, prosperity, success, fruitfulness, wealth and riches, rescue, protection, shelter, and a long life. Call now and get Jonathan Burnus' brand new book and audio CD package, Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures, Adonai Yira. God of provision, yours for a donation of $39. Ask for offer number 1962. Shipping and handling is included. This beautiful book includes 46 different inspirational photos. It also includes 46 of God's greatest scriptural promises for you to confess, written in both English and in Hebrew. Then, through the ease of transliteration, you can declare each promise for yourself in Hebrew. Included is this audio CD with Jonathan reading every verse in English and then a native-born Israeli reading them in Hebrew. Watch the Hebrew promises for Adonai Yira go directly into your spirit and manifest miracles in your life. I mean, imagine confessing these promises of God, internalizing them. No demon in hell will want to come into your home or car. Don't miss out on getting Jonathan's brand new book and audio CD package, Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures, Adonai Yira, God of Provision. Yours for a donation of $39. Ask for offer number 1962. Or get the whole Confessing the Hebrew Collection, three books with three accompanying audio CDs, The Lord Your Healer, God of Our Peace, and God Our Provider. Each book contains beautiful photos of Israel and scriptures to meditate on in English and in Hebrew. Yours for the special price of $79 for all three. Ask for offer number 9314. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 1962 for Jonathan's newest package or offer number 9314 for the collection or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, Jonathan and I were talking just before we had the break and even after the break about the names of God and the power that is behind the names of God. Uh, for instance, the Lord our provider. Tell me about the origin of that word even. I, I love the names of God. Let me just say that, that I love the compound names of God because they express His very nature, His very personhood, and, and He wants us to live in those realities. The Lord our provider, uh, Yire, comes from Genesis 22, and this is so beautiful. God commands Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, and he's willing to do it, believing that God will even resurrect him from the dead if he, if he lets him go through with it. And he's raising the knife in obedience, and God stops him. The angel of the Lord stops him and provides a lamb. And that's where it comes from. God himself will provide the ram for the offering, and it's a prophetic picture of Jesus. What does that mean? It means that God, our provider, has provided his son and all of his blessings, all of his, of his provisions are found in his son, God's atonement. Isn't that beautiful? And what, what is the Hebrew word for God, our provider? Adonai or yod heh vav heh Jehovah uh, Yireh. Yere, it, it's, it's not, we say Jehovah Jireh, it's Adonai Yere. You know, you want to get it right? Everyone in unison, Yere. Yere. You, my goodness, I didn't know we had a Jewish group. <laughs> okay, Beautiful. speaking of a Jewish group, I'm taking you now to the Lemba tribe. Oh, my favorite tribe. Uh, and right tell, uh, uh, tell me about these people. Uh, didn't they just intermarry and, uh, and they're no. not really Jewish? No, they claim that they were the ones that were banished by Ezra after the Babylonian captivity. And there's actually a place called Lemba in Jordan that was part of the Promised Land. According to their oral tradition, they made their way through Yemen and then into Africa and then down into the bush of Zimbabwe eventually. And for 800 years, they've been living in an isolated community. So that means they don't know what is called 
uh, today as rabbinic Judaism, which no. was developed after the temple was destroyed, which really doesn't have a whole lot to do with Judaism. So they're no like knowledge. a throwback before rabbinic Judaism. And, and it's not the script. They're going on their oral traditions that are directly connected to, to the Torah. For example, in the middle of the bush of Zimbabwe, they have their own kosher butchers said really? that, that, that actually don't, don't eat any animals strangled. They, they, they slit the throat, they drain it, and they eat kosher meat, not rabbinic kosher, but biblically kosher. They circumcise their male children, but not on the eighth day, on the eighth year. They got that one a little bit wrong. <laughs> but they, and they well, don't with all these thousands of years, what do you expect? Pretty, pretty <laughs> close. But, and they don't intermarry. They're an isolated community, and they know that they're part of the people of Israel without any rabbinic Judaism. Tell me about their DNA. Well, they, were, they claimed that they were part of the household of Israel. They were, they were ignored until someone did a DNA study a few years ago and said, uh, the DNA study that, that brought about this understanding of the Cohen gene, the haplotype that connected to the Cohen, the high priest, was a sampling of the Sephardic and Ashkenazi were done, uh, names Cohen, or they knew they were from the priestly line, 50% of the Sephar, of the Ashkenazi, 60% of those tested of the Sephardic had this similar gene that they defined the Cohen gene. When they did the test on the Lemba, 70% wow. of those tested had the same gene. Now, here's the exciting part. They're coming to the Lord and they're moving in this, just as they're moving in Judaism before rabbinic Judaism came along, they're now moving in Jesus before religion came along. Uh, are they operating in it's the supernatural? They are operating in the supernatural. We've had over 5,000 that have prayed to receive Jesus with us in, uh, in 5,000 in priests of, of Israel. 7, you got that? <laughs> oh. 35 congregation, and they're young men moving in the supernatural realm. When I was there a few weeks ago, and this is what's so exciting, I began to move back into travail and travail began to spread across the room. Amazing, huh? I'll tell you, Jonathan, uh, we, we just have a couple of minutes. I would like you to pray that those watching have your heart and my heart to reach the lost sheep of the house of Israel at this yes. day set time to favor Zion. Well, God is looking for people that will stand in the gap, and we desperately need prayer warriors, intercessors that will commit themselves to pray for the salvation of Israel. You have been called to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy, and the first thing that you have to do to make that happen is to pray them in, to pray those co-workers and those neighbors and those f extended family members that are Jewish. There is a move of God happening among the Jewish people now, but we need your prayer and I'm going to pray that God moves you into a place of deep intercession. In Jesus' name, just agree with me. Lord, I pray for those that are watching that you would raise up intercessors that would move in travail, in supplication, in, the, in supernatural tongues with unction for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Lord, bring your people into a place of prayer and intercession to stand in the gap for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Jesus' name, receive it. Receive it right now. There is a burden, unction coming over some of you right now. Just begin to pray in other tongues and let that anointing be released in your life right now. It's happening. Sid, the anointing is the, here. Not, not just the anointing, the anointing for travail is here. Yes, because you, Jonathan Lord. has started to travail again. I tell you, I had a dream. And Jesus said, I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. The question is, not when he's coming. The question is, are you ready to make him your Messiah and Lord? The question is, have you confessed your sins before God and believe the blood of Jesus washed it away? The question is, have you made him Lord and told him to live inside of you? Answer that question right now. Do it. <laughs> Let there be light. And there was light. These words as recorded in Genesis that God spoke when He created the heavens and the earth were in Hebrew. More when we return to It's Supernatural!
Now you can confess God's promises for success, wealth, and blessings. In English, Adonai Yira means abundance, blessings, multiplication, lacking for nothing, prosperity, success, fruitfulness, wealth and riches, rescue, protection, shelter, and a long life. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough. I believe that the Hebrew tongue, which the prophets used to write the scriptures, has a portal that opens up into heaven when that language is released and the angels come up and down on what you're confessing. Call now and get Jonathan Burnus' brand new book and audio CD package, Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures, Adonai Yira, God of Provision, yours. For a donation of $39, ask for offer number 1962. Shipping and handling is included. This beautiful book includes 46 different inspirational photos. It also includes 46 of God's greatest scriptural promises for you to confess, written in both English and in Hebrew. Then, through the ease of transliteration, you can declare each promise for yourself in Hebrew. Included is this audio CD with Jonathan reading every verse in English and then a native-born Israeli reading them in Hebrew. Psalms chapter 20, verses 5 and 6. May He grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. We will shout for joy in your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May Adonai fulfill all your petitions. Yiten lecha chilvavecha v'chol atzatcha yemale neranena bishuatecha Uvshem Eloheinu Nidgol Yemale Adonai Kol Mishalotecha. Watch the Hebrew promises for Adonai Yira go directly into your spirit and manifest miracles in your life. I mean, imagine confessing these promises of God, internalizing them in Hebrew, in English, the Israeli speaking it in Hebrew with beautiful background music. I'll tell you. No demon in hell will want to come into your home or car. Don't miss out on getting Jonathan's brand new book and audio CD package, Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures, Adonai Yira, God of Provision. Yours for a donation of $39. Ask for offer number 1962. Or get the whole Confessing the Hebrew collection, three books with three accompanying audio CDs, The Lord Your Healer, God of Our Peace, and God Our Provider. Each book contains beautiful photos of Israel and scriptures to meditate on in English and in Hebrew. Yours for the special price of $79 for all three. Ask for offer number 9314. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 1962 for Jonathan's newest package or offer number 9314 for the collection or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. My guest goes all over the world and has the most miracles. An artificial eye. Have you ever seen an artificial eye? It belonged there, but they're holding it. You know why it's not in there? There's an eyeball that was formed. Would anyone want to see that? Yeah. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 